Hey, what's up? I'll be showing you how to fix your Melee washing machine that is giving you an F53 technical error or one that's just not spinning, not giving you any errors. Now you might look at this one and think, hey, mine looks different from this one and this doesn't apply to me. But rest assured, this will apply to most Melee models because the concept is the same and the mechanics that are going into it are the same. So we'll be touching on how to reset, how to fix this error. To show you what it looks like while this error is going, say you've got your washer on and you want to start a cycle. So this usually shows up during the spin section of the cycle and it'll be really, it's an annoying blaring sound that you cannot avoid, that you cannot turn off for the life of it. It just wants to keep letting you know that there's an error with it. So don't be alarmed whenever you see this error come up on your washer because it's really, really fixable with a couple of tools. You're gonna need a Torx bit. So that's the sound it makes. And if you look close enough at the screen as well, it'll be showing you that F23 error. So you wanna make sure that we're gonna fix that together. So I just turned that off. You're gonna need a T20 Torx bit and a T30 Torx bit. You're also going to need some new carbon brushes to put on this so that we get rid of this error once and for all. And then you're going to need a flathead screwdriver and that takes care of taking the seal off. But before you unplug the washing machine, you're going to need to switch off the washing machine and switch it back on so that it's not showing you that warning anymore that you're able to operate, at least open the door. So you just press that and then the door can open. The reason why we're doing that is because we're gonna need to remove this whole front panel to be able to access the motor that is within the washing machine. So if you don't open that now, you won't be able to open it without actually having power to it. So go ahead and get that door open and then we'll proceed with the rest of the repair. Before you do anything else, make sure you switch off the power switch off the power and then unplug it from the power. Unplug it so that there's no risk of someone coming to turn it on and then you getting shocked because we are going to be working with live electricity if you still have it plugged in. So make sure you have it turned off. The first thing we're gonna remove is we're gonna use our T30 we're going to use our T30 bit to take off this screw over here. So you just undo it anti-clockwise, it comes off. There's not much to removing this from the washer and that's off. The next bit we're going to do is we want to remove the clamping ring that holds this whole seal on here. Now behind this there will be a spring with a wire on it. So you're going to grab your flathead screwdriver and then just feel along the edges here until you feel some vibrations. That's how you'll detect that that's where the spring is. Like just what I did or you can use your fingers to do that. To take it out you just pry it and it comes out. I usually just put it in there so I don't forget where it's at. And this, let's pull it out from here. Goes in just like so. We are halfway there. I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna remove our soap drawer. To remove the soap drawer, there's this yellow bit, this orange bit here, which you just press down and you pull it out. So this bit, push it down and pull this out and it comes out. The next stage is we want to remove the top cover of the washer. So the top cover is held in place by two screws here 
one on the left and one on the right, just where my hands are there. With your flat screwdriver, what you want to do is, our screw that we want to take off is in there. So if you've got thin fingernails, you can use that. But if you've got a thin screwdriver, you can just try to pry this bit out and it's out. It's just a little protective cover there. And with these, you're going to undo that screw that's there. You don't need to take it out all the way because you're just going to need to press it inside and then that's how it comes out. Do the same for the other side. Beautiful. Now make sure you keep these protective covers somewhere where you won't lose them. To remove the top lid, it's pretty simple. You sort of press, you lift the top up and you're sort of swiveling off the back of the washer and out. That way you're not breaking any tabs, anything. Because the way it's put in there, there's sort of like hinges at the back that hold the top cover on there. As we continue with our repair, obviously we're going to undo this computer, this board. So just make sure you, you're not undoing any connections. There's no need for you to undo any connections there because all our work is going to be on the top side here. We're going to need to remove two screws, one on the left and one on the right with our T20 bit. So one will be here. Just take it off and remember where you've put it. We're going to need to take two more screws, some of them off. We're going to have to disconnect the door switch, which is holding this whole thing together. Because this door switch is attached at the back there. That's why this thing is still holding on. So let's go ahead, disconnect that. And as soon as you take them off, it wants to come off. So just make sure you've got your hand on it. Close this door, that flap, and to remove this, you're simply lifting that off. Just remember that there will be like, um, there's a manual door release there, the orange one. So if you ever get stuck trying to open the door while well, you've got no power on there, you can always use that. So from here on, all our work is going to be down there. So our motor is located down here. You're going to have to come down here and remove the motor. Well, we won't remove the motor, but there's some casings there that hold the brushes in there. And that's what we're going to remove. If you look in there, this bit here, this is the motor. And we're going to remove all these protective casings, which make it a bit harder for us to access our brushes. So you're going to need to take your T20. With your T20, you're going to undo a couple of screws in there. So we're going to do like undo. It's probably about two screws holding, holding this bit here. So you're going to undo those. So one at the top here. So bulk of your work is going to be done with your T20. The T30 was only for removing that big screw on the front of the washer.
once we've taken those screws off, we also want to disconnect the motor. So, sorry, the connectors to the motor, that's what we want to disconnect. So to disconnect that, we simply just pull on the tabs that are in the top of that, and these pull out. And they go back in the same way that they came out. To pull this, to remove this, you just simply pull it. Step, pull this out. Ugh. You won't be breaking anything, so don't worry. Ugh. Of course, you can get some cutters and cut off this zip ties on here. Make it easier for yourself, but there's really no need because it all comes out as one unit. You just set it to the side, and we are almost there. So. Next stage will be to take out these one, two, three, four screws in there, and then we can access our brushes. Hey, I post a lot of videos on how to fix these washers, so if you haven't clicked the subscribe button or like button, be sure to hit it up as I'll be posting future updates for more problems that might come up with these Miele washers. I also have other solutions for other brands as well, so will be handy to have me in your inbox in case something happens to your washing machine. And if you ever get stuck during this repair or any other repairs, be sure to leave a comment in the comment section below and I will get back to you. By clicking that like or subscribe button, it will go a long way to help out this channel and many other people that are looking for repairs similar to this one. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and that like button. And I'll be sharing with you, so to find the carbon brushes that go on this washer, you'd need to code your model number. Now your model number is usually on your soap drawer. So you can code that on eBay and it will show you the brushes that you need, the Miele carbon brushes that you need. I will try to put a link in my description below as to where you can find these carbon brushes, but this just depends with whatever region you're from. Your eBay store or Amazon store will have people that are selling these, and nowadays a lot of them, these brushes, they're all right. They do the job. Once you've got those screws out, all you need to do is then pull this, so you pull it equally from the left and from the right, and it just comes out nicely like that. Let's have a closer look at this thing. I'm sure you're wondering to yourself, what the heck is this thing? So let's have a look. So we're gonna have a look at what this is. So basically these are your carbon brushes here. So this bit and this bit. So one side is responsible for the washing, which is this one, which is not that really worn out. But you can look at the length of this one, it's really worn out. So that's why you're getting that F53 error, which is preventing you from spinning your washer or starting a cycle. So we're gonna need to change this brush. So I usually recommend you to change both because if one goes, it won't be long until the other one goes. To change this, you're gonna need your Phillips head screw, your flat head screwdriver and your new brushes, of course. So the new ones will have the right length. And so to remove it, there's this clip, so you can see it's clipped in there. So you're gonna need to unclip it by, you can push it back just like that. It comes out, same thing goes on that side. It comes out, beautiful, it's out. And then usually change them one by one so that you don't forget the orientation of them. As you can see, one is facing that way with a pointy bit and the other one's facing that way with a pointy bit. You don't want to get that wrong, otherwise it will start making noises when it's spinning or when it's turning. The other thing we're gonna need to do is disconnect this and you're gonna need to pull out nice and hard. This one wasn't too hard to pull out, so you just pull it out and it comes out and push it to the side get your new brushes out. 
so when you whenever you get these sometimes some of them will come out differently and I'll say different because you, you have a look at this holder and that holder they're different so if you if you sorry so if this holder is different from the old holder this orange bit if yours is different from the other one all you can do is just transfer the old one onto the new one and then that way you'd be good you, you won't have to worry about um, anything much on these so let's sort that out so just also have a look at how the other one sits and you can see that it sits like that and this it's being held in place by this bit so to take out this bit because it's not cut you have to make one of these flat and then you can take it out so just transfer this across and put it on here so it sits exactly as it did on the old one and you can see it's pretty nice there putting it back in you are simply just matching everything as it was before sitting it in there and it's nice and proper again and of course remember to put this retaining clip in it make sure it clips in nicely and don't forget to plug in the terminal otherwise you put it in and then it'll still give you the same error so make sure you clip it in and that way you won't get any errors coming up after you've done it so make sure it's nice and snug so you do the same thing for this other side as well change that beautiful there we have it just as a complete unit there everything's back the way it was and you can see how significantly longer these are and you can see how short these are now the other one's like really really short so that's what caused that F40, F53 problem. We're gonna put it back in. When putting these back in, you wanna make sure that these are put back all the way. Otherwise they don't sit in there properly and then it doesn't like work properly. The other thing you wanna take care of is you see these pins, one, two, three, four. So they correspond to some points in there in the washer so one here two here one here two here they're sort of like plugs that you will be plugging in when you're pushing this in so they're essentially plugs that you're plugging in there so you want to make sure that those are going in at the same time as well so it's a bit of a delicate uh, process when you're doing this you need to get it right otherwise this won't work and then you go what's going on but follow these steps and you'll be sure to do it right so this sits in between your commutator here which is responsible for turning a drum so get that right first and then actually line line these connectors up first and then you can um, do the rest easily now i always find it easier to do this from the left side just get down on the ground get nice and comfortable don't be on your knees just remember the connectors go here so this bit goes this side so just get on your knees and pull these connectors in and so the idea is we're gonna have it in like that so these need to go in all the way the biggest problem now is that these brushes are long enough now so it's not as simple as when we took it out but you can if you push them in nice there you go so mine mine are in so at this stage so the first thing you'd start with is pushing those brushes in i just grab the old brushes to show you what i mean so what you want to start with is like pushing these in so that you've got enough space to get it in past over that housing and then once you've got it in there you want to grab a torch or something actually even by feel you can feel that the connectors are getting back into place so just by feel I want to make sure that I've lined up these connectors for the brushes 
otherwise this thing is not going to turn so this is where you need like uh, some someone with a torch or something I can feel mine are in because if they're not in you can actually feel that they're not in with your fingers so you can just feel have a feel for where they've gone into and I can really feel that's in if you have a torch you can just shine it in there and have a look to make sure that it's pro nice and proper in there once you've got that in you want to put your screws back in so we start with those four so everything now we're just doing it in reverse so just put everything else back in reverse this is very important that you secure this because this is where the carbon brushes are sitting you don't want this thing bouncing around once it starts going so what we're going to do now is we're going to put this back so you just put that this cover back on there and make sure you put back these connectors connect them nicely make sure they're nice and firm and then we are going to put back the front panel what we're going to do now is we're going to put back this front panel but before we do that we're going to make sure that we line up this emergency door release in the hole that comes in this put it in there just until it comes out a bit and then at the bottom of your washing machine and the left and on the right side there's some tabs there that line up with your panel you put them in there have your screws which you took off the top handy put them in so one for the left just hold it in place there and the other one for the right to hold it in place there then you just simply screw it on We're going to put back our door switch. Don't overdo it. Beautiful. And remember to put back the door seal. So while you still have it here, make sure you're putting in the door seal and it just clings to the, to your door panel, making sure it gets into that groove. Do it by feel so you make sure that it's nice and in there we don't want it creating we don't want to be creating new problems by not sealing the washing machine properly and when it goes in nice and proper you can really feel it as it would be in there all right this is what we put in to retain it you're gonna need your flat screwdriver handy because that's gonna help you to put it in there if there's two of you you will be able to put it in together so grab your flat screwdriver and put everything else but the spring in last so this one stretches pretty nicely so the idea is that you use this, just be careful not to rip the seal while you're doing this. And then that's it, pretty simple. And of course, remember to put back this bolt over here to nicely secure this drum, this panel to the drum. And of course, just do it up until it's about hand tight. That will be enough to hold it in place. Then close that. This panel, there's two tabs as well. One, two. Line them up and push it down. And it goes in there. When it comes to the top cover, remember there's two hinges at the back so one there one there you're going to need to put it in those grooves and get it 
to sit in there nice and proper. So I'll show you the motion that you do to put it in. So you just, it, once you have it apart, it's pretty self-explanatory, explanatory how it goes in there. So just line it up. It's in the groove, it's going down. Once it's in there, it's nice and proper. Then just do up those screws. Don't need to do them too tight, otherwise you're gonna break it. And make sure you tighten the other side as well. Nice and tight. Everything's gone in there nice and proper. Make sure you put back those tabs that cover those holes. And of course, we're gonna put back this cover, put it in, just push it. Moment of truth. We're gonna test it out to see if it's now fully working again, if our fix has worked. So you need to plug yours in and then just turn it on. Then we're gonna put it onto our spin setting, press start. There you go, it's just, it's just going already. And before it wasn't turning, if you can have a look in there in the drum, it's already turning, which means this fix has officially fixed it. So if yours had that problem, now it's spinning new brushes in there, new lease of life, ready to go for another four or five years. And that's about how you fix that problem. If you ever get stuck at any stage during this repair process, be sure to leave a comment in the sex comment section below and I will get back to you. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you on the next one.